Hello, um, this is a little tutorial, a slight digression for me because this time we're talking about some um, biochemistry and molecular biology techniques uh, and this is looking at some free software from the company Lycor which is called Image Studio Lite. This is a Lycor website. If you do a search on Google for Image Studio Lite you will get access to this site which allows you to download a free copy of Image Studio Lite. Image Studio Lite is a fantastic piece of software that allows you to do densitometry analysis on Western blots, PCRs, or other uh, immunoblots or gel electrophoresis experiments, including silver staining and, um, and Kumasi staining. So uh, this is what the interface looks like when you open up Image Studio Lite. This is on my Mac, so the PC version looks slightly differently. Um, but the great thing is it's available for both PC and Mac, and the two versions appear to be almost identical in functionality. Um, it's got a Windows look about it, and it's designed to look a little bit like Microsoft Office, uh, in that if you click on the little IS logo at the top left here, it brings down a very Microsoft-esque uh, import, export, save, print, etc. box. And this allows you to import images from Image Studio, if you happen to have the full version of Image Studio, um, Odyssey and Perl, which are two other uh, image acquisition packages made by Lycor. And the beauty is, for the free version, it also allows you to import TIFFs, PNGs, JPEGs, uh, in other words, images that you have captured using a desktop scanner or another uh, densitometry imaging system. And that's obviously the use that most of us will have for this software, is importing images from other software. Once your image is imported, it just sits on this little desktop window in the middle here, and this is a Western blot uh, in Blue Peter Styley that I prepared earlier. And you can see here you can import various other Westerns, and I've got a little collection of Westerns you can see that I've already done some analysis on uh, on the bottom here. And everything you import stays in this little bottom window. You can expand this window and you can label various things. It's quite a handy little window. But to be honest, this is more for lab book generation. I'm more interested in just doing densitometry. So I tend to import pictures, do the analysis, and then close the pictures and delete them from this database, just so I can carry on doing my work. Um, the menu is uh, broken down into four different sections. There's the image section, which allows you to do various things like adjust your image, change the channels you're seeing. If your image in this case is black and white, you just see the white channel. Uh, if your image is in uh, color, you'll also see the red, green, and blue channels, and you can change various uh, contrast and brightness of those different channels. You can show your images or your lab book here in different modes, either one or two or, or more across, so you can look at variations on your image. You can do a slideshow of the various images you've got, which is uh, fun if you like that kind of thing. Uh, you can duplicate images, rotate, flip, reduce noise, assign channels, and the great one at the end here is you can crop. So by clicking on the crop tool, you can then just highlight the bit you want to crop down to. I'm just going to make this one a little bit smaller. There we go. Press OK, and now it's cropped this image and saved it within the software. Your original image on your hard disk, which might well be your full gel, remains unedited, which is great. Um, reducing noise is a dodgy business, especially with Western blots. It will uh, essentially edit the document, and as we well know, we shouldn't be editing our scans by removing uh, unnecessary noise because we may actually be removing some of our biological data, so use that one with caution. Uh, we can also change how we're going to be exporting or printing our image, and we can copy parts of our image as well for pasting into other bits of software. Uh, with the image loaded on the screen, uh, depending on which of these windows are open, whether it's image, analysis, annotation, or lab book, you've also got the option of doing various things on the right-hand side. And by default, the display tab is shown, which allows you to muck around with brightness and contrast and the saturation curves of your image for subtle changes in what you see. Um, down here, you've got profiles, concentration, and a chart, but at the moment, we've not done any analysis, so it won't show any data in those windows. The analysis tool is where all the work happens and in the analysis tool you have a selection box which allows you to then select items that you've created on the screen and the rest of these boxes um, basically are to do with densitometry analysis of these various rectangles and various blobs you have on your western blots or your PCRs. So um, there is two options. 
you can either automatically add rectangles as depicted by add rectangle or you can draw your own rectangles and that basically allows you to draw a rectangle of a predefined shape or an ellipse of a predefined shape around a, a blob or a, a lane on your band and allows you to do the densitometry from that. I would always do draw rectangle. Uh, this allows you to copy and paste a rectangle so that all of your um, gels have the same size rectangle for comparison. It just makes life a lot easier for explaining later what the densitometry da data mean. So I would always do that. But if you're feeling adventurous, you could click on add rectangle, which I'm going to do now. Press your mouse on one of the on one of the bands, and you can see it's automatically drawn a blob around the band. And I can draw it over all of these, and you can see it's drawn a uh, rectangle that encompasses what the software thinks is the band. So um, I would undo all of that by pressing Command Z or Control Z on a PC, and I would draw my own rectangle. So I'm going to draw a rectangle that encompasses my band. And I'm going to use the select button to select the rectangle. You can see it's selected when it's got a dotted line around it. I'll make sure it's about the right size, which it is. Then I'm going to press copy and paste. Paste again. And in this style, I am now adding these rectangles to my gel. One might argue that you'd need to make your box a little wider for this last one to enable you to encompass the entire band. Um, one would argue you could put all the others at the same width as well, but for the moment I'll leave that where it is. So now what it's done is it's selected each of these bands, uh, and if you look over here now under Profiles, you'll see that it's created a peak profile that shows the uh, band, and if you click on each of these, you can see the peaks change as our bands are slightly different densities, which is good. It's a good sign. It shows the software is clearly able to look at intensity. But at the moment, it's not subtracting any backgrounds, and therefore we don't know how big this band is. And you'll see underneath here it says NAN. In other words, it can't calculate the density of each of these bands. So we'll move down, 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 over to here, and this is where our background is set. At the moment, it's set to user defined. That's my default option. You've got a choice between none, averaged, where you can choose the top of your segment, the top bottom or the right left, so in other words it chooses um, a border around the outside of your um, square that you've drawn and you press save and you can see what it's done now is this little tiny line down here is our background line. That's actually not a bad idea because, of course, if there's any variation in the long, longitudinal section of your gel, this would pick that up quite nicely. You could, of course, go to average and choose top to bottom. And you can see there it's taken an average of the density at the top and at the bottom, and it will subtract that from the background. And you can see what it's done is it's plotted a background. And you can choose various other options. The median, for instance, you can choose to choose the median or the average around all your gels or various parts and have a play with those settings and choose one you think works for you. To be honest, I think the average, choosing average and choosing all is a fairly good option if your gel is fairly clean, but if your gel is not very clean and there's a, a big gradient across your gel or there's something strange going on, you may want to choose user defined and it'll tell you that the background method is user defined, but I need to assign a shape. So I press OK, and then I'm going to draw a rectangle, for instance, across the entire width of my gel, and I'm going to right-click on it and choose Assign Shape. And now that is my background. You can see here, this is my background shape, and it calculates all of my optical densities according to the subtraction of the mean of this large background blob. You can experiment with this, and you can select it, make it different sizes, move it around your membrane, but you'll notice in this case it's affecting all of my bands equally um, and it's indiscriminate about how much it's uh, taking off each band. It's the same on all of them simply because the gel is fairly clean so we haven't got a big problem with that. Uh, you can then unassign that shape if you choose not to use that shape and you can go back if you want to go to average and choose other options. So it's a fairly flexible piece of software. I'm just going to delete um, that background box there 
and I'm going to leave it on average for the time being. So that's deleted that one just by highlighting it and pressing the backspace button. So these are now my optical densities that it is determined from each of these, subtracting the background. And if you click on each of these lanes and choose the profiles, you'll see it's done a pretty good job at taking the background noise away from each of the lanes. If you're worried about it, you can make your band taller and see how the numbers change. To be honest, it's not changing a huge amount, so you could be fairly happy that what you're selecting is a good value. The key to densitometry is also observation. Looking at these bands, this is a fairly clean gel to look at. You can see that that band is clearly darker than band number two. Band number three is clearly the darkest band on the gel. Four and five look much the same, and maybe six is slightly denser than five and four, and again, slightly denser than one, but not as dense as three. And if you choose to look at these numbers here, you'll see that those numbers correspond to the opinion that I've just made by looking at the gel. And that's obviously a good sign of a densitometry program that actually agrees with what your eyes are telling you. Um, obviously, it may bias your opinion, but you have to be aware of that in, in all science, obviously. Um, once you've looked at your profiles and you're happy with your background subtraction, and you're happy with what you can see on the screen, you can choose to show background, show text, show labels, show the shapes, hide the shapes, or show them hide the quantification, or show and hide the color bar. So you've got lots of options to display things. Have a little play with that. But down the bottom here, you've got the chart option. And you can see what it's doing is it's plotting a little bar chart to show you the relative densities of each of these. You would, of course, do this in your graph program separately because you'd need to average data from many westerns and many samples to get a decent data set, but this just gives you a quick look-see to see what we're looking at. And we can clearly see that if we look at this gel here, we've got six lanes, and those six lanes are represented by different height bars. Um, you may get a bit annoyed, and I certainly have on occasion, where these boxes overlap our image and our image looks a bit small. We can go back to the image window, click on the zoom button, and choose zoom to fit and it'll always fit the image into the left side window. Make our graph smaller, go to zoom, zoom to fit and it'll fit again. So the software itself is actually fairly self-explanatory, it's not particularly complicated to understand. Uh, the great thing is with the densitometry you've got here, you can now look at what you want to print for instance, you can choose the print area, yep happy with that, and then you can go to the window, choose print, and you can have a little look. So I'm just going to go page setup, uh, make sure it's printing to my office printer, and I can just choose print, and it'll print this window with the densitometry, the annotations, and the numbers for your route book. So all in all, it's a very handy little bit of software, not particularly complicated. For those of you who are using much more complicated densitometry programs, this it does appear to do the job. I would certainly want to compare this with um, slightly higher end densitometry programs to make sure that the numbers are accurate, but I think for uh, a bit of software that just needs to give you some densitometry numbers to be able to compare treatments during a, a biochemical experiment or cell culture experiment, I think it's uh, very capable. So please go to the Lycor website. There it is again. Just remember it's lycor.com. Have a search for Image Studio Lite in their research tools and uh, download and have a play because it's free.